Now, with stocks near session lows, our next guest says the Fed's tightening won't necessarily cause a recession, and he's telling investors not to be scared of that inverted yield curve. 82 basis points, Peter Anderson. That's what we were just showing on the twos and tens. He's the chief investment officer at Anderson Capital Management. Peter, what makes you so sanguine? Well, first off, the uh, focus that we have on inverted yield curves, I understand that, Kelly. But one of the things we have to think about is that is created by us, investors. It isn't some kind of divine message from the heavens that we think we should interpret it as an independent assessment. So think of it this way. If I'm bearish, I'm going to trade treasuries in a certain way that's going to construct that yield curve. Then I'm going to look at the yield curve and say, wow, this yield curve is implying a recession. So it's almost a vicious cycle that you get in. And while it's an academic interest to look at a yield curve and analyze its inversion, I don't necessarily think that it guarantees we're going to have a recession. I hear you, but let's just talk about the tens versus the one year treasuries, for instance. They've inverted 11 previous times. Ten of those ended in a recession. The 11th ended in a sharp slowdown with Fed rate cuts. Yes, and uh, I would love that we could use these more than rules of thumb as like a factual physics equation. But as we know, this is a complicated field. We use emotions, fear, reading all kinds of articles about where we're heading. And last but certainly not least, this is a total different recovery, isn't it? I mean, I think the Fed is somewhat confused about is this a recovery or a boom? And I think most of them are thinking it's a boom. I tend to think it's a protracted recovery just because it was such a crazy entrance into this world pandemic. And I would love to see a textbook recovery, but I think we have to relax that expectation a bit and say, let's calm down, things will improve, but it's going to be very, very lumpy along the way. Okay, Peter, so you say an inverted yield curve doesn't scare you. What would scare you? Um, <laughs> collapse of consumer confidence and spending, some unforeseen geopolitical shock? Well, there's a lot of scary things out there, and uh, I do get scared myself. So uh, I wanted to negate that first off. But what I look at are the financials of companies, you know, their cash flows. I'm a former bond investor, so I'm very, very pessimistic and worried all the time about cash flows, EBITDA, leverage and coverage. So when I look at stocks, I try to find stocks that have pre prevailed through this past three years. And believe it or not, there are some out there that have done very well there uh, from a bond per holders perspective. Their coverage has increased and their leverage has decreased, even in the face of, say, uh, decreasing revenues in a macro sense. Peter, so let's... that's what would scare me is if I were not to be able to find companies that had those improving metrics throughout this. Sure. And maybe at some point, if, you know, the fundamentals really deteriorate, that's one thing. But for now, you've got at least three names that you like. Zoetis, Booz Allen, United Rentals. Is that right? That's correct. And they all have those traits that I just mentioned, Kelly. You know, you look back and United Rentals, you know, their EBITDA has increased 20 percent over the past year and their revenues are up on an annualized basis for the past three years, about 12%. The stock is up slightly, 5%, but just think of that. I mean, that's a serial acquirer. It just bought one of its major competitors last month for $2 billion. It did a fundraising for that via the high yield market. And so there's a company that I think regardless, sure, the Fed is going to impact almost everybody if they keep hiking, but some will be uh, hit less than others. And the numbers don't lie, you know, as opposed to, say, the yield curve, which we make up as trading. Uh, when you look at financial statements and especially, you know, the purest of pure, say, EBITDA, that is not made up by us. That's made up by the actual transactions of the company. And the same applies for Booz Allen Hamilton. Let me just mention about that consulting company. I don't think many people have realized that this is about 90% business from the government, the right. U.S. government, mainly in security. And do you know if that- If you're worried about backward. recession, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> recession never me, comes for the government, except maybe, uh, you know, well, Tea Party I was going, times. I was going to say that because their backlog is four times their annual revenue right now. And while we can't say that's guaranteed revenue, just as you were joking, you know, they're pretty solid predictions about their contractual revenues. All right, fair enough. Peter, thank you. It's great to have you here today. And the yield curve, uh, you know, devotees can come your way. <laughs> okay, thank you. Peter Anderson, Anderson Capital Management. Coming up, Tom.